All right, I'm here at Informatica booth at AWS reInvent, and it's day three. I'm with Gaurav Pada, who's VP at Informatica. Gaurav, uh, first of all, welcome to the Ravid Show. It's such a pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure the audience knows you, but still, uh, how how would you like to introduce yourself and even tell a little about your roles and responsibilities? Sure. I lead uh, two areas at Informatica uh, from the product management side. I focus on metadata management, so all, all of our products in data catalog, data governance area, they fall under me. Second, I lead all, all of our AI initiatives, which is uh, what we call our Claire uh, umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Claire is all about using AI, including the new gen AI for data management, and our goal is to provide the same power to all of our data management customers as well. Right. So those are the two key areas that I lead at Informatica. Before that, I was uh, I've spent about 20 years uh, in the data side. Before uh, I've been with Informatica for about 11 years, 10 years uh, with Oracle before. So oh uh, my God, 20 years is huge, and uh, that kind of brings me to another question around you know generative AI, LLMs. We all know you know it has actually taken the world by storm, emerging hot discussion topics and uh, things are getting real as well. Uh, how do you think generative AI will transform the data management space? Uh, with generative AI, there is a lot of expectations uh, that uh, is now getting built in in our user yeah. base. Being able to, they've been uh, doing data management for a very long time. All right. the same things, data integration, data quality, data cataloging, data governance. It's intricate, uh, uh, be making uh, intricate configurations so that the end user, which generally can be uh, CEO, vice presidents getting uh, the insight that they need, or for every single business user uh, getting the insight that they need for their day-to-day -day jobs as well. Uh, the problem has been getting access to the right data to the right user uh, at the right time. And then that has been the hardest part with generative AI. Yeah. We hope that business users will be able to uh, interact with data using natural language, yeah. uh, being able to ask what was my customer churn for product X for quarter three, and able to get a direct answer from the system. Yeah. That's what we are aiming for. Now, uh, remember, uh, each of these sentences here is different for, the uh, for each organization. What product X means is very different. What True. quarter True. three means is very different as well. Exactly. Um, some may have like a yearly quarter, some may have quarters that go from May to April. For yeah. us, we need to understand exactly for that organization what each of these things mean so that we are able to answer that questions correctly. So, so that's, that's our aim. No, I love it. And uh, that also brings me to something which is uh, uh, like Jitesh says it's hot always, data engineering. Right. Uh, so how is Informatica Data Engineering Solution helping organization to jumpstart in generative AI initiatives? Would you like to share something about Sure. That? Data engineering is all about making data ready for different uh, capabilities. Yeah. For a lot of time, it is about getting data ready for business insights. Uh, I have Tableau, I have Power BI, data is in its raw format is not useful. So being able to correct the data quality, engineer the data in the right format so that Tableau, Power BI and other BI tools are able to use, True. that's about 80% of the workloads today. 20% yeah. Yeah. of it is AI um, and most of it is about tabular data. Uh, so AI algorithms like XGBoost uh, and then others are uh, rampant. Yeah. But with large language models, now we are getting into a totally new space. Every single organization in the world is looking at how can they use large language models and generative AI yeah. to make their users' life a lot more easier. Yeah. You can go around uh, AWS booths here, I would tell you not uh, more than 5% uh, will have generative, no generative AI in their, uh, uh, in their <laughs> capabilities. So our goal um, with our data engineering tools is making it easier to get whether it's log data, whether it is data about their customers, to use them securely and uh, making sure that it uh, is um, it's uh, it adheres to all the organization's governance policies, mm -hmm. and then get ready for large language models. Yeah. Uh, so for, for for some of that, some of the organizations that may mean 
if there are European customers involved, mask all of their data, don't even bring them to large language models. For some of them it may mean if uh, there are sensitive data about their addresses, about their credit cards, about the social security numbers, I'm hoping it's for every organization that's the rule, that does not go into a large language model. True. Because True. large language models are nothing but compressed data. They yeah. remember everything, uh, right? So if that data goes in, it's very easy for a, uh, for somebody to ask that question. What is, what is Gaurav Pathak's salary? And they will be disappointed after uh, once I get the answer. <laughs> no worries. I think uh, these are great insights. Do you also think then uh, is responsible AI going to play a very important role in 2024? Absolutely. Responsible AI is all about uh, making sure that we are using right data with the right consent, with yep. the right governance policies, yep. without any secure private information. But also making sure that as AI deals with different kinds of users, yep. understand uh, if there is abuse uh, happening and then being able to tell them, uh, no, that's not the area where uh, AI model will go into. Uh, we are working with a lot of our partners uh, like uh, AWS and Anthropic and Microsoft yep. uh, to be able to uh, use some of the responsible AI modules within Flare GPT, uh, for mm -hmm. example, yep. and helping customers to make sure that the AI models are trained on right data yep. so that uh, they don't get into patterns like that as well. Okay. Since we are on, the, on this topic and you, 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 you spoke about Claire, uh, I have a quick question around, can you tell us more about uh, Informatica's Claire first of all and how does it uh, help data engineering practice, what's the angle there? Sure, we'll first talk about Informatica itself, we are in data management, we've been um, doing this for 30 years, 30 years. Um, okay. we started as an ETL company but we're doing a lot of data management today, data integration, data quality, data governance, cataloging, master data management, a lot of it uh, and all of this is in the cloud today. What we do with Claire is provide AI for data management. Okay. Helping okay. our data management users, which are data engineers, uh, data quality stewards, data analysts, data scientists, able to manage data more easily. So with AI, um, uh, with Claire, uh, we have two parts of it. One is a Claire Copilot. Yeah. Claire Copilot uh, has about 20 plus capabilities in the cloud. Yeah. where we help with things like uh, labeling data correctly. Uh, we have this um, yeah. product called the Data Marketplace, yeah. which is uh, the Amazon for uh, data assets, yeah. uh, right? And just like Amazon, Amazon is able to create a great uh, product website right. because there are these large regional warehouses True. where you have bots that put things in the right places, label things correctly so that yeah. they already know what you are going to order, maybe even before you do. 100%, right. With Claire, we do the same thing, but we do that with the data assets. So we have okay. this metadata inventory or a metadata warehouse. As new data comes in into the organization, Clairebots picks them up, puts uh, the right labels on it, categorizes them properly, yeah. says, okay, this looks like PII data, this has credit card numbers, yeah. this has a customer purchase history, so that you can have a data marketplace like that uh, in your organization as well. So that's just one example. We have about 20 or uh, more of that. And, I love it. Yeah. And, and so that's Claire Copilot, and of course, once large language models came about, um, we announced Claire GPT at uh, Informatica World this year, and uh, uh, we are we expect to take that live in April of next year. Okay, I can't wait. And uh, that was my next question. Since we are, uh, you know, just around the corner of 2024, and uh, I'm this is my favorite question. Uh, you know, when we are kind of getting towards 2024, is do you have any data predictions, Gen AI, where will it be moving and uh, what's what's the future looking like uh, from Informatica perspective but in general as well? Sure. Um, I think um, Gen AI is one of those life-changing technologies uh, that comes about once in 10, 20, 30 years. Right. I, I didn't think that we will have uh, a technology which will be, will be able to talk to and is able to understand us and give us answers uh, exactly. in such a coherent manner. So true. We had to change the definition of Turing test, by the way, because uh, you know we wanted to say GPT-4 is no longer uh, uh, Gen A, uh, sorry, uh, AGI, AGI. Uh, right. Uh, right? So, so now the definition of AGI is something that does scientific inventions on its oh, own. Wow. So, uh, I think uh, Gen AI is uh, the the least 
at what it is today. It's only going to improve from here. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's good at individual tasks. It's not good at planning. It's uh, it requires a lot of humans to help, and I think it's going to continue like that for a while. But it's going to improve. It's going to um, get better and is able to do a lot of tasks that we were uh, yeah. we were looking at humans to do as well. Yeah. Which means I think we will find something more uh, nicer to do ourselves. Uh, uh, right. Then. Yeah, like that's one of the questions when you know Gen AI, the AI kind of came into the game. People were like, "Oh, is it going to take jobs?" And like, I've read so much. I've content. Like, I've interviewed a lot of leaders as well, and they're like, "It's not going to take up any jobs, but it just makes you a little more smarter in what you're doing, and uh, you can do much more there, right? As you said, it's just going to be more work and more stuff that you can get into." Absolutely, and and then the scrutiny around what data can be used by what AI will only increase. I I think we'll in the next few years we'll have governments providing regulations yep. about uh, what kind of data is used, what kind of ownership is assigned to it, what kind of data lineage it is, what kind of quality that you have, what uh, kind of security and privacy and sensitive data cannot be in uh, the data that you're using for AI. Right. I I expect a lot of regulations uh, to come down the pipe. I expect a lot of organizations to get ready for that revolution. Uh, GPT-4 has been trained on all public data, which is all internet data. It's yeah. nowhere compared to each of these organizations uh, will uh, combined will have 10x more data than what GPT-4 is trained on today. Exactly. So uh, the only way to go out from here is up. I can't wait. Thanks a lot, Gora Patak, uh, for doing this. It's such a pleasure to host you on the Rabbit Show, and. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I'll be reaching out to you off air with a lot of questions around Gen AI because you are an expert out there. So thanks for doing this, but also for for the audience if they want to reach out to you, where can they reach out? Oh, I'm on Twitter uh, X. Uh, on X, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. you can find me at, at Gaurav Patak uh, there, and I'm on LinkedIn as well. But uh, it was great talking to you as well, Ravi. Thank you very much, Gaurav. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.